Ladies and gentlemen, back again here, BASF at K25. I see you all in red through these beautiful skiing goggles. Florian Fischer can tell us more about why that is an important step forward and actually a game changer in the industry. Yes. Florian, you take over. Have fun. Hello, everybody. Really glad to be here and to give you some ideas on what we do in lattice design and additive manufacturing. And I want to start really at the beginning, lattices today. What do we know about lattices? And well, there's one citation, any material is a structure if you look at it through a sufficient strong microscope. And coming from the chemistry side, yeah, I, I look really deep into the molecules and there already you see a structure as here the diamond structure. And you could go even large scale and you look at our creation center in Ludwigshafen where we invite all our customers. And there again, you find something like a lattice structure in a macroscopic way. But then we want to talk somewhere in the middle between those. And on one side, BSF has all their foams. And you see here a microscope picture. And this already, again, is looking almost like a lattice structure. And now we get 3D printing, which enables us to really design a lattice structure. We can design every single beam, maybe even a wall inside it. We can change the diameter at every location of this lattice. Um, and this is new, but at the same time it opens so many possibilities and difficulties doing it that I want to show you a little bit what we do with lattices and how we enable our customers also to use them and start working with them. And I want to start with a few use cases to give you an idea how many possibilities there are in 3D printing with lattices. And one of a really big field for us is the protective gear. And here we have, for example, one helmet. And if you come later, and I couldn't take it with me to the other side of this wall, you can see the Xenet helmet, which is the NFL helmet, which was one of the three finalists of the last NFL helmet challenge, passing all the requirements using the absorption uh, of the lattice. But I brought one other part, which is an impact for the back, so for back protection motorcyclists, it does pass the norm, and we designed it using our simulation, which I show in a second, to fulfill all the requirements. Please just pass it around, take a look, touch and feel it. Another area where we are really active in, and you just saw Adidas before me, maybe um, are the midsoles, and you can see we even made our own BSF shoes with a midsole printed, and I also want to pass around one example which is also highlighting the colors we are not today able to do with our coatings. Um, moving on, you could do something like a textile structure. So many are going like here. We have a barefoot shoe and the full upper is 3D printed. And it's not 100% I lettuce, I would say, but it's a almost two-day lettuce or structures like this where you have, well, you just have to feel and touch it. It's almost not describable. And of course, you can go in other fields than plastics. You can go into metal. So we have a metal filament where you could make lightweight designs, which have not been possible today. You could go even more into cushioning. We had once a headrest. Um, you can go in architecture, as you saw on the creation center. But here it's, for example, a wall which is dividing different rooms and really can have the function to control the daylight, depending on where the sun is standing, more or less light is coming in and out into the room. And one highlight also today you will find over on this side of the booth is a full 3D printed car seat we did together in a concept car with Citroën. 100% TPU, so you can take it out and more or less shred it, recycle it. No little screws, metal parts to assemble this part. And one thing all of you I think know are those little swabs you put up in your nose when you have to test yourself. Um, also in the time when there was a shortage on those test pads or those test things. Um, several companies started to print them in 3D printing uh, as full functional parts. But if you have no experience, where to start? And that was almost the same question we had three to four years ago, starting with 3D printing on our flexible materials. Um, and we said, okay, let's take our TPU based on our Elastolan and make different structures and look what kind of mechanical properties can we find? And you see here on the bottom all the type of lattices we tested. There are many more, but we started with those. We said we want to have everywhere the same density, so the weight of all parts were the same, and we started measuring. Just we compressed those parts, and we looked at the force together with the distance. And you can see 
we expected a wide variety, but it was way bigger than we anticipated at the beginning. And this led to the question for us, how can we now sort those different kind of lattice types? How can we find the right lattice for a seat, for protective gear, maybe for a ski goggle as I have it here? So all those different applications need different requirements. And I want to go through with you real quick to show you the different kind of lattices which can have different behaviors. And I want to start with the energy absorption lattice we often use, so it's just over here in the protective pad used. And it needs a curve which has a huge area under the curve, because the area under the curve is the energy you can absorb. And here we often use a cubic-like structure. It goes really soon in bending, and then the full energy is absorbed by the bending of those beams, and you have to make sure that they don't touch each other, that it really takes a long time until any lattice beam touches another one, because then it goes into a compaction and the energy peaks and is transferred to the head or the back of the person wearing it. Another completely different application is the headrest, for example. As you can see it here, it has to have a, let's say, low energy absorption. It has to feel nice, cushioning. And here we choose something in between. So you see the lattice on the screen. It has some beams staying straight, which go into bending. But before they do, you have those V-like structures in the lattice, which have more like a bending opening of the angle and gives kind of comfort structure. And you see it also in the curve. If you go then to the footwear, you need something with a really high rebound. And the two curves I showed before, they normally have a hysteresis, which is really different than to the loading curve, which means there's not much rebound. A lot of energy is absorbed and lost. But then you look at this lattice. It's a Kelvin or Venti lattice, you normally call it. It has a really straight linear um, curve. And normally also the rebounds or the hysteresis is almost on the same curve. So you get a lot of rebound, which you need in a footwear. Or you combine it if you need something in the heel different than on the front. And last, one lattice, which is a really soft one. It deforms easily, but then stays also deformed until you leave it. You sometimes have it in a matrix or something like this. So those different kind of types we have identified. We can work with customers, but what about the cell size? They can be bigger, they can be smaller. What about the beam diameter? Should we increase it, lower it? What mechanical properties do we get here? And here we started working on two versions. Some people need really the haptic. You need the haptic feedback, you have to touch and feel it. Or you want to look at data, where you see really the curves, as I show them here, see um, E modulus, a compression stiffness, and so on. And I want to start with the lattice test pad we designed. And I brought one with me, and you find more on the wall behind me. Um, there are different cell sizes, different diameters, some with skin, some without the skin. And I can pass this one also around. And this is normally how we start with a customer. He comes and says, maybe I'm in the cushioning area. I want to make a seat. Or he says, I'm in the protective area. And we have different lattice test pads. We can give a customer. He can touch, feel, maybe even put them into a testing machine. And then he gives us feedback. I need a lattice maybe in this range, one bigger, something in between. And we can then replicate this and bring this into his volume. So if he has a volume like this one, without lettuce, we then fill it with the lettuce he needs and he sees the requirements, and then it goes in second testing of the final part. But this is maybe for the people which do haptic, never had it in hand, often then they say, I need more data behind it. And that's where we said, OK, we tested a whole bunch of lettuces, so we have those data. But also, we teamed up with our UltraSim team, which is running simulation. And for several years now, they developed material models to describe, especially those flexible materials we have in 3D printing, taking into account also the anisotropy you normally have from the process of 3D printing, and can simulate, and you see it here on the bottom, the full compression, including the bending, the buckling of those kind of lattice structures. And using this, we built up a huge library, which is describing our lattice tests, but even more lattices in between those, let's say, segmented areas in the lattice test bed giving, you see it here, a stiffness, a shore hardness, uh, a compression hardness, and even you could get a full curve of the compression, stress drain curve, and maybe match it to the foam you're using today and say, okay, look, this lattice is behaving exactly as the foam I have today. And this kind of library we then normally use if you want to go in a more data-driven design. Again, we choose one, two, or three lattices. We get the information where, maybe in the seat or in the midsole, 
a certain lattice has to be placed and we design again the volume including the lattice inside this one. Um, yeah, I hope I could give you a little bit of an introduction what and how we design lattices. I showed this on our one TPU material we have for laser sintering, but of course this can be extended to photopolymers, to the filaments, and any kind almost of flexible material or even hard material if it's there used. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for your attention. I hope you had good feel and touch and uh, you're all invited to come also over behind this wall where we have all our 3D printing samples to maybe get a bigger touch and feel, have some questions. Um, thanks a lot. BASF. We create chemistry.